revered law professor, colleague, son, father, brother, and friend was gunned down in broad daylight in his own home. What enemy or enemies had Mr. Markell made that set into motion such a brutal act? The answer, his own family. Dan Markell murdered in his own driveway, allegedly all because of a custody battle between him and his ex-wife, Wendy Adelson. His death rattled his community who loved him so much and his family. And this morning, we want to take a moment to shine a spotlight on those impacted the most by his death, the people who loved him the most, his family members. And they have been through the ringer. They have already sat through two trials as the hitman and his girlfriend were convicted. And now they're looking at another trial as Dan Markell's ex-brother-in-law, Charlie Adelson, prepares to face a jury accused of orchestrating the murder for hire plot, only adding more pain to what Dan Markell's mother, Ruth, is already feeling. Parents are not supposed to outlive their children. A mother should never have to bury her own child. Perhaps this is why there are words to describe someone who loses a spouse or their parents, a widow or an orphan. But there is no word in the English language for someone who loses a child. And yet, because of the acts of a few, my son Dan's life was cut very short, and I have been forced to experience the unthinkable and to live a life filled with unimaginable pain and heartbreak that no mother should ever have to endure. Joining me now, very special guest, Dan Markell's mother and also the author of the book, The Unveiling, A Mother's Reflection on Murder, Grief and Trial Life, Ruth Markell, live on the show with us. Ruth, uh, good morning to you uh, and just person to person. So sorry for your loss. You are remarkable in everything you are doing in this process now to get justice for your son. Uh, first question, please. How are you and your family holding up at this point in time? First of all, congratulations on your new Aww, program. You're so sweet. And Thank all, you. all the best, all the best of luck and Aww, so on. You're too kind. Thank you. The Ruth. thing for us right now is, is we're preparing for the trial life. It's a hard time. It's a hard time. Uh, first of all, we just had uh, the Jewish holidays. And then it's Danny's birthday coming up October 9th. And then the trial is October 23rd. So this is a heavy duty experience on the very personal, personal level. Oh, absolutely, Ruth. Uh, and you called your son Danny, huh? Did he prefer Danny? Danny, I'll tell you about his name quickly. Please. He was Danny until he left for Harvard. <laughs> and then he became Dan for 10 years. And then he became Danny again <laughs> uh, when he had children. Sure. Oh, uh, you know, and speaking of, I wanted to ask you about your grandkids. How are they doing and how aware are they of what's happening right now? We, we, we don't really know how aware they are. Um, we, we did have some visits with them as a result of... Uh, you know, we passed the Markell Act. It's not that it applied directly to them, but I think it gave Wendy a push uh, to have us see the children. Uh, they're now uh, 14 and almost 13 next month. And um, I, think, I think it's tough now. I believe they know Charlie's in jail. And I think this changed a little bit of their own experiences about starting to get some information about what's going on. Ruth, I want to ask you more about the Markell Act. So uh, it's my understanding that after this horrific incident, you lost your son, that Wendy, his ex-wife, Wendy Adelson, uh, had essentially taken your family name off of the children's names legally so that they were not Markell. And it affected your ability to visit your grandkids as a grandparent in the state of Florida under the laws. Um, my understanding of the stripping of the name stripped you all of some rights. And so you and your family members went to your state lawmakers, petitioned uh, to 
get into effect better grandparent visitation rights through this Markell Act. Um, tell us more about this, please, Ruth. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. Sure. There, there is some special information about the chronology. After Danny was murdered, the first two years, we did go and visit. Now, in that first year period of 2015, Wendy changed the name from Markel to Adelson. We still were able to visit. It was after the arrests that we were no more longer able to visit. We tried to get the lawyers to talk to each other through the back, you know, back background. We then went on 2020 ABC. We went on Dateline and we also were not able, we were not successful. At that point, a few people were coaching me that I'm gonna have to write a bill I'm sitting in Canada. How am I going to write a bill in Florida about the restrictive Florida legislation? Anyway, what happened after 2019, after Garcia's arrest, believe this or not, I was in a hairdresser in Tallahassee, and this young woman comes over to me, and she jumps at me. Can I give you a hug? And I said, well, sure. She says, let's go for coffee afterwards. I said, sure. And we went, and she says to me, what can I do for you? And I said, grandparent alienation. I already knew I had to write a bill, but I didn't have the opportunity to have the connections in Tallahassee. So, so Karen, Karen Halpern Cyphers, she created this magnificent community and hired, we hired lobbyists and she had one of the uh, senators presented in January, 2020, but a bill was passed in and, and signed by DeSantis in January, uh, June 24th, 2022. Bravo, bravo. I wish I could give you a standing ovation uh, right now, Ruth. I mean, that is not easy to do. And you're going through the grief and the pain of losing your incredible son. Um, but how wonderful that you are continuing his legacy in a way with this with his name living on through this and, and so that no one else has to go through what you and your family went through in this situation. And speaking of legacy, I wanna ask you please, Ruth, when we think about your son, Danny, this was a very accomplished man you raised. Um, kudos to you, mom. Uh, you know, he was a brilliant guy and, and a very well liked man, you know, by everyone who knew him. I, I haven't heard a bad word about him and we have been following uh, this case for quite some time. Everyone has very positive things to say about your son. Tell me please, Ruth, what do you think Danny would want his legacy to be? And what do you think his legacy is? Dan was a great father. His children were his world. And I think that's what he would want. He would want his children to have roots, Jewish roots, Jewish-centered lifestyle. He would want his children to have a sense of belonging with all his family in Canada, in the States, and in Israel. He was very much a family-oriented person. And I think that, sure, he would like his scholarly accomplishments to, to be known, but he also was a great connector with all his friends. So I, I think people have to see him much more in his social, his social capacity and not just the scholarly. So that's, that's what I think he would always want his legacy to look like. And it really does, as we look back at these pictures of him, you see how well-rounded he was. You know, certainly he's in the world of academia, which is so impressive, you know, but he also is very grounded with his family members. You can see it in all these photos we're looking at. Uh, so he really was someone who could do it all. Uh, Ruth, as we look ahead uh, to the coming weeks, uh, these, these are not going to be easy. Um, I know you've got to be thinking about what justice should look like or what you want it to look like for Danny. Tell us what that is, please. Justice for Danny, of course, would be that everybody would be held accountable. For, for us, the next few weeks looks probably looks different than other people. So we're not speculating or asking questions, but we have to prepare ourselves. 
And the first thing is uh, that we have to start to deal with who's on the witness list, which comes out this, this Friday, September 22nd. Also, there was just a change in the judges. Uh, so Justice Wheeler is not, Judge Wheeler is not going to be doing this trial, which makes us all very, very anxious and nervous that so we are in this roller coaster mode anyway. Uh, this just puts us at the high end of the roller coaster. In addition, we have to prepare the victim impact statements. So sentencing and all this is a reality for us that's different than any of your previous guests who I adore. And I know, you know, I know they're doing a great job, but we have to go into this with our guts and, and that, and then the deliberations and the waiting and the final verdict. So our experience is, is very, very intense. It's not cerebral. No, it's not. A trial is, is grueling, especially when you've been victimized. It's traumatic. It's reliving all that trauma again. Uh, and I have to say, Ruth, you are remarkable. You are epitomizing strength and class, and so many people are looking to you with so much admiration. Uh, we send you every good wish uh, as you head into this trial and would love to have you back on the show whenever you are able. Thank you kindly for everything today. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure, and good luck. Oh, thank you so much, Ruth.